There is a love due to all, but a peculiar love to our Christian brethren, whom the Apostle Paul calls, by a like word, the household of faith. Galatians 6.10 Christian brethren are united by a threefold cord. Two of them are common to other men, but the third cord is the strongest, and theirs peculiarly. Their bodies are descended of the same man, and their souls of the same God. But their new life, by which they are most entirely brethren, is derived from the same God-man, Jesus Christ. Yea, in him they are all one body, receiving life from him, their glorious head, who is called the firstborn among many brethren. Romans 8:29. And as his unspeakable love was the source of this new being and fraternity, so, doubtless, it cannot but produce indissoluble love amongst them that are partakers of it. The spirit of love and concord is that precious ointment that runs down the head of our great high priest to the skirts of his garment. The life of Christ and this law of love are combined and cannot be severed. Can there be enmity betwixt those hearts that meet in him? Why do you pretend yourselves Christians, and yet remain not only strangers to this love, but most contrary to it, biters and devourers one of another, and will not be convinced of the great guiltiness and uncomeliness of strifes and envyings amongst you, is this the badge that Christ hath left his brethren, to wrangle and malign one another? Do you not know, on the contrary, that they are to be known by mutual love? By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if ye love one another. John 8.35 How often doth that beloved disciple press this? He drank deep of that wellspring of love that was in the breast on which he leaned, and, if they relate aright, he died exhorting this, Love one another. Oh, that there were more of this love of Christ in our hearts, arising from the sense of his love to us. That would teach this mutual love more effectually, which the preaching of it may set before us. But without that other teaching, cannot work within us. Why do we still hear these things in vain? Do we believe what the love of Christ did to us, and suffered for us? And will we do nothing for him, not forgive a shadow, a fancy of injury, much less a real one, for his sake, and love him that wronged us, whoever he be? but especially being one of our brethren in this spiritual sense. Many are the duties of this peculiar fraternal love, that mutual converse and admonition and reproof and comforting and other duties which are fallen into neglect, not only amongst formal, but even amongst real Christians. Let us entreat more of his spirit who is love and that will remedy this evil.